Good morning, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with our Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on June 9th, 2023, recorded on 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. In today's video, we're going to be going over all of the latest updates and insights into the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. There's a lot of crazy updates, a lot of not normal things that are going on. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the Atlantic Basin today, it is pretty quiet out there. However, there is a couple of things ongoing. First of all, down here in the island chain, very unusual and very unbearable heat. I've gotten a few comments from some viewers down there indicating that some of the heat indices are over 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So just absolutely crazy, ridiculous heat. That's something you would see like in Florida almost. And even then, that's not all the time. So very ridiculous heat. And that's caused by a lot of this dry air. You notice that all this dry air originated in the tropical Atlantic and is moving uh, westward with time. So this will be moving over the next couple of days, generally towards the rest of the Central and Western Caribbean. There are still some showers and thunderstorm activities ongoing across portions of Cuba right now and Central America, but these, uh, these activities will dwindle down over the next several days. And elsewise in the Atlantic Basin, it is nice and quiet, which is certainly some good news. Taking a look here at the sea surface temperature anomaly map updated as of yesterday, June 8th, we have a couple of things that are currently in progress. First of all, we noticed the developing El Nino out there across the equatorial Pacific, where the water temperatures in some cases are reaching about one half to two degrees Celsius above the long-term average. So we are officially now beginning the El Nino phase. However, in the Atlantic Basin, we notice where the water temperatures in some cases are roughly about one half to two degrees Celsius above the long-term average as well. And this is very unusual and warming of the tropical Atlantic is only expected to continue throughout the next several weeks and probably for the next several months as the trade winds will be permanently reduced across that area at least throughout the foreseeable near term and probably into the medium and long range as well. This continues to suggest a very unusual season where you have two competing factors such as the El Nino and also the very warm tropical Atlantic. And this certainly does have a little bit of concerning factors as we progress throughout the remainder of the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. The one other thing that does have my attention here, we're looking at the upper ocean heat content, which is basically a measure of how deep the warmest waters in the basin go. And we notice where you're starting to pick up on some of that lighter shade of blue. And as you get towards the warmer colors, this indicates higher upper ocean heat content and more fuel available for tropical cyclones and hurricanes. And what you already notice is that the majority of the tropical Atlantic really west of about 40 degrees uh, west there has enough energy to support tropical cyclones and hurricanes this time of the year. And certainly all the way up to roughly about 25 degrees north there. This certainly is very unusual because you typically don't see this until very late in the season where you get some of those warmest waters to reside there just off the Cabo Verde Islands. And so this is already giving me an indication that tropical waves that come off, especially later in the season, aren't going to be dealing with much of cooler water problems. And I do think that this will help them certainly develop into tropical cyclones potentially more frequently than what we've seen in the past several years. The other thing to monitor as well, this is the North American Malta Model Ensemble. When looking at the precipitation anomaly forecast throughout August, September, and October. So this would traditionally be the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. Where you see the greens in there, this indicates that there is more moisture in the atmosphere and more precipitation. And where you see the browns, that means less precipitation. And very clearly, you see a trend towards more precipitation out across the main development region, the northeastern part of the Caribbean, and into the Bahamas, and even across Florida and portions of the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. This doesn't implicitly, this, this is not a implicit response to the hurricanes necessarily. This doesn't imply that this is what's going to be happening in terms of the hurricane tracks. But this does indicate that there is going to be more moisture, more tropical waves, and potentially more stronger tropical waves across this region, which then could develop into tropical cyclones if the environment is right. 
So this definitely, well, I wouldn't say it's necessarily super concerning. It definitely has my attention for going later in the season during the peak. I think that this could be a problem, especially with those warmer waters that we've already just previously looked at. I do think that's kind of a bad recipe there. So finally here, we're going to take a look at the GFS precipital water forecast for the next 10 days. The warmer colors here, especially where my cursor is, this indicates a deep a deep fetch of tropical moisture and higher moisture content, more precipitation available in a theoretical column of the atmosphere. So right now you kind of see the fire hose setup that we've been dealing with over portions of the northwestern Caribbean over the last several days, a lot of heavy rainfall out here. But notice all the dry, more stable air in the atmosphere out across Puerto Rico and back into the tropical Atlantic. This is all that dry air in the water vapor satellite that we are looking at at the beginning here of the video. If we continue to roll this forward, you notice that again, that deep tropical moisture does get shut down eventually by some of this more dry air that works its way into the Caribbean uh, no real organized systems developing throughout the next several days, which is certainly some good news. And the deepest of the tropical moisture remains confined here into the inner tropical convergence zone. And of course, then out into the eastern Pacific basin. However, within the next about six to 10 days, this is where the forecast does become a little bit more murky on the GFS. This is valid through the 18th um, of June. So this is... Uh, within about the next eight days or so. And we're looking at the potential for a few things to be happening. We noticed that in the GFS, you have a incipient wave that tries to develop out here in the Caribbean, or at least a wave that theoretically or assumptionally would come from Africa and move its way into the Caribbean. Now, development out here in the MDR in the Caribbean is not currently anticipated. Dry upper level air or dry mid level air and strong upper level winds uh, basically don't support any strong development out of this system. Uh, but one of the things that we will be watching is you notice that kind of curling up here in the GFS will kind of let this play out. You kind of notice how that kind of curls up there near portions of Central America on the 18th going into the 19th. This might suggest a Central American gyre that could try to develop and potentially spin off into a tropical cyclone in the Northwestern Caribbean. And in fact, that's what the GFS tries to do. It tries to spin up something here in the Eastern Pacific and also in the Northwestern Caribbean. However, I'm not really so sold on this idea. The GFS has a longstanding history of spurious vorticity problems. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you would have heard me talking about this many times early and late season with the Northwestern Caribbean developments here. So I'm not really sold on this. The European and the European ensembles do not suggest any type of tropical cyclone activity throughout the next 10 days, but it is certainly something on the radar. But how will the upper level winds respond? Well, let's go ahead and look at that right now. So one of the important things that we look for in terms of tropical cyclone development is low vertical shear. And one of the things that we'll be looking for, we're looking at the 300 millibar winds, so roughly about 24 to 25,000 feet in the atmosphere. And one of the things that we tend to look for, these arrows here, this indicates the direction of wind and the wind speed. And we notice that any of the colored arrows here, this indicates wind speeds, generally over 34 knots or 40 miles per hour worth of shear. And we notice where the system would try to be developing right where my cursor is in the Northwestern Caribbean. There is pretty unfavorable uh, conditions. If we actually look here at the text, basically just showing where all the uh, wind speeds are, we'll kind of uh, reduce it out a little bit so you can actually see a little bit more better here and, and not so cluttered. But you notice some of the, these wind shear uh, values are over 30 knots in some locations. 30 knots, 40 knots here uh, in the southwestern or southeastern Gulf of Mexico. There is lighter shear though down here closer towards Belize. But generally speaking, this entire area is basically just overrun by a lot of shear. So in terms of development chances, I don't really think that we're going to be seeing much of anything that is going to be developing out here 
If anything, there might be something in the Eastern Pacific Basin, but even that is a stretch for the time being. And speaking of the Eastern Pacific Basin, one final look here at the Eastern Pacific as we close out this video. Nothing really going on out there. A couple of shower and thunderstorm activity in the intertropical convergence zone, but that is roughly about it. Notice all of the dry, stable air out there prohibiting any significant development. And that will likely be the case at least for the next 7 to 10 days. Beyond that time frame, however, I do think that as the Madden-Julian oscillation, which is basically large-scale ascent or rising motion in the atmosphere, moves across the eastern Pacific Basin from the western Pacific, where you've got all these typhoons developing, as it moves out from the western Pacific and into the eastern Pacific Basin, and then begins to cross over to Central America, I think that is going to be the time frame probably within the next about 20 to 30 days where we're probably going to be dealing with more activity in the Eastern Pacific Basin, potentially a tropical cyclone outbreak where we have multiple cyclones developing out there in the Eastern Pacific. But for the time being, there is no threat currently, nothing on the, nothing on the imminent horizon. So it's really this kind of medium to long range that we're going to be watching throughout probably uh, the next latter part of June into early July. So with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Hope you enjoy this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you think about the remainder of the Atlantic hurricane season and what your predictions are. All right. That being said, have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. God bless. Take care. And I'll talk to you guys again some more over the next several days.